Hello my friends and welcome to my first healing entry of the How To series, starting with Endwalker's new addition to the healing role, Sage. Sage is a barrier based healer with a plethora of cooldowns at its disposal. The barrier family of healer specializes in barriers if it wasn't obvious and Sage is more on the approach of using cooldowns like a tank would use cooldowns, mitigation cooldowns to shield their party. Honestly as a tank main if you've played tank you'll probably love Sage because it feels like playing a tank but instead of using the tank cooldowns on yourself you're giving the tank cooldowns to other people. This is why I love the job so much. How we're going to do this is first we're going to go over every single ability and how they work and then some tips and advice on how to fully utilize all these abilities. After that we'll go into an opener and rotation part that shouldn't take us too long because healing rotations and openers are super straightforward. Then I'll give you a dungeon example just showing you the basics of how you should be running a dungeon if your tank is pulling wall to wall how you're going to heal them and still output a respectable amount of damage. After that, I'll show you some of the stats and how we're going to be gearing Sage. And then once that's over, I'm going to roll the outro and we're going to have some closing thoughts about how I feel about Sage. So without further ado, let's just dive right into the abilities and how they work. Okay, so first we're going to go over three particular GCD spells. And the reason for this is because all three of them tie so well together with a particular other ability. So the three spells that we're going to go over is Dosis, Diagnosis and Prognosis. Now why are we tying these all three together is because they link to Eucretia. Dosis is our single target damaging spell and when we use it with Eucretia it will turn the single target damaging impact spell into a dot instead. This dot should be kept up at all times during single target instances. We then have Diagnosis, this is a single target heal but when we use it with Eucretia it'll turn it into a shield and this shield is going to erect a barrier on the target for 180% of the potency and if it crits it's going to double in strength. If this shield is broken as well it'll add a stack to the adder sting gauge we'll go over the adder sting gauge in just a moment though just keep that in mind then we have prognosis when we use eucretia with prognosis this is simply going to turn this aoe heal into an aoe shield instead this aoe shield is going to erect a barrier around everyone affected for 320 percent potency of the initial hit so if this crits it's not going to double in strength like diagnosis but it's still going to be slightly stronger and then we have eucretia we've already been over this but i'll just put it here just be wary this is on the GCDs so you can't use it as an OGCD weave and it is like a toggle stance every time we use Eucretia it's then going to turn doses prognosis and diagnosis into the relevant spells instead and then once we use those relevant spells once it's then going to untoggle Eucretia and then if we want those effects again we'll have to just toggle Eucretia back quite a good thing Square Enix did with this to not bloat the hotbar too much now that we've talked over those three very important things, let's talk about the job gauge now just to tie it all together very nicely. So first we have the Adder's Gal stack system. This is our Sage job gauge and it holds up to three stacks and you get a stack every 20 seconds during and outside of combat. These stacks grant access to special healing and mitigation OGCDs off the global cooldown spells. These spells include Durachol, which is a single target heal and every time we use it, it restores 7% of our maximum MP. By the way, all of these always restore 7% of our maximum MP, so I'm not going to mention that every time. And then we have Kerachol. This is a beneficial AoE for all of our party members and ourselves, and everyone who gets affected by this buff is going to have 10% less damage taken for 15 seconds. And then once we get to level 78, it's going to have the added effect of a regen for 15 seconds as well. This is on a 30 second cooldown, so just be wary of that, you cannot spam it. Then we have Exachol. This is simply an AoE heal, and this, just like Kerachol, is on a 30 second cooldown, so it cannot be spammed. This is also great for raid wide damage, healing everyone up. Then our final ability is Torachel. This is similar to Kerachel, but instead of an AoE, it's going to only affect a single target. The initial effect is going to have a kill potency of 700, and it's then going to have an additional effect of reducing that target's damage taken by 10% for 15 seconds. This is on a 45 second cooldown, so again, it cannot be spammed. But this is great for putting on your tank, and it's also great for when someone takes a hit that they shouldn't have, or they get resurrected then it's great to top them up a little bit and stabilize them as any incoming damage 
will be mitigated. And this is great for just keeping them alive while your other healer or you're using Jura Chills to get them back up again. So that covers all the Adder's Gal abilities. Now let's move on to the Adder Sting gauge, which is a little gauge underneath the Adder's Gal gauge, which is another gauge which can hold up to three stacks. Like we went over earlier, every time we use Eucretia and Diagnosis, it's going to give a shield. And when that shield breaks, it's going to add one to the Adder Sting Gauge every time. This Adder Sting Gauge is going to give us access to Toxicon. Toxicon is a offensive spell and it's going to deal the same amount of damage as your current Dosis deals. So it's always going to be damage neutral, but it doesn't have a cast time and it's also an AoE. So this is a damage increase in an AoE situation to plus targets and it is also great as a mobility ability when we need to move for certain mechanics in a boss fight or a dungeon or whatever this is going to have a positive effect on our damage output because we'll continue to deal damage while having to move which is just great overall and of course this is on the gcd this is why we use it as a mobility skill and it costs one add a sting every time okay now we've covered the free eucretia gcds we've covered the gauge Adder's Gal and Adder Sting. Let's move on to Cardia. Cardia is a buff we can apply to one particular target party member. And this is essentially just going to make every single one of our offensive spells heal them for 170 potency, a static 170 potency all the time. This never changes with a few exceptions. This is essentially our fairy. So scholars have their fairy, which heals passively. Cardia is pretty much our fairy as a sage. That said, I believe we have more flexibility with this because we can manually switch who we want to heal with this while the fairy kind of just does its own thing. That said, it's not the worst AI. It's kind of smart now, but regardless, it's more in the power of you. This leads me on to my next ability, Sorteria. This simply increases the healing potency from Cardia by 50%. So when we use offensive spells with this up, it's just going to make the heal a bit better which is a nice little bonus and a nice little cooldown to use, pretty much off cooldown just to keep the tank or whoever topped up a bit more. We then have Phlegma. This is a nice AoE and it's going to deal 400 potency on a selected target, but it's an AoE cleave around that target and it's going to have a 30% damage drop off for all remaining enemies. So make sure we're putting this on the highest HP enemy and the most centered in the pack of mobs enemy if we do decide to use this. Of course, we do want to use this more or less on cooldown this is a damage increase on single target and AoE. It's on a 45 second cooldown and it has two charges. It's also instacast, so it's a great flexible spell to use when we need to move, but I wouldn't keep this on two charges. Always make sure the CD is rolling for this ability. We also want to try and get it under raid buffs when it comes to a raid instance. We then have Icarus, very unique to Sage. This is a gap closer on a healer. We can use this on a party member or an enemy, and it's just gonna rush to that target with no additional cost, except on a 45 second cooldown. This is fantastic mobility, and it's also great to use on a raid instance when you're just doing damage, dealing damage, and you want to move to a particular place, but you don't wanna cancel your spell, then choose a trusty companion to use Icarus on, a bit like how Black Mage has Ethereal Manipulation, and basically use them as your taxi to safety without having to miss out on a spell cast. And then we have Discratia. This is our AoE offensive spell. Doesn't have a cast time. And this is a damage increase on two or more targets. That said, make sure we are using our Eucretia Dosis on two or more targets. So we multi dot two or more targets, and then we're gonna spam Decrashia. Next up, we have Zoe. This is simply a OGCD that's gonna increase the healing potency of a spell by 50%. This only works on our GCD spells. So this is great with Eucretia Diagnosis and also great with another spell, which we'll get into a little bit later on. It's on a 90 second cooldown and it lasts 30 seconds. Of course, once you use it, the buff will be gone. So it just, just keep in mind that you can have it up for 30 seconds before you have to use it. We then have Pepsis. This is going to turn any shield that we make with Eucretia Diagnosis or Eucretia Prognosis into a heal rather than a shield. If you played Scholar, this is like emergency tactics, but sort of reverse. You use your shield and then you'll use Pepsis 
and then it's going to remove the shield off people and turn that shield into a heal. I see a lot of sages always doing this wrong because if you use it without a shield up, it's going to make the effect dodged and um, you don't want to see that. So make sure you're having a shield up if you do have to ever use this. I honestly haven't really had to use this often uh, in a lot of content I've done as a sage, but it is there for when you need it. Then we have Physis 1 and 2. Once we get to level 60, we'll have Physis 2, which we'll defaultly have. So we only need to worry about Physis 1 when we are lower than level 60 and scaled down content. So when we use Physis, it's going to apply an AoE regen to all part, all of our party members in range. This regen is excellent. It's great for raid wides and it's also great just to put on the tank, a bit like Karachol. And it's also great to combine with stuff like Karachol because it has an additional effect which will increase the HP recovered by healing actions by 10%. So this is going to increase the regen of Karachol, for example, making Karachol a much stronger buff. Obviously, this can be combined with literally any of your healing spells and any of your co-healer spells. So this is just an excellent ability overall. The regen is going to last 15 seconds and this healing increase is going to last only 10 seconds. So just be wary that the timers are slightly different when you use this. Next, we have Hymer, which is on a 120 second cooldown, and that is well deserved because this is a really powerful ability. This is used on a single target, and it's going to create a barrier around that target for 300 cure potency. But it's also going to grant five stacks of hibernation. So this is essentially going to do the above effect five times for a total of 15 seconds, which is ridiculously powerful. You're essentially putting five shields on someone which get reapplied every time they take damage. When the effect fully expires, it's just gonna have a flower heal. So this is really good for putting on a tank for tank busters or just filler damage or big dungeon trash pulls. It's incredibly good. It's pretty much like an invulnerability. This ability is insane. We then have Rhizomato. This is on a 90 second cooldown and basically all it's going to do is going to give us one Adder's Gal stack. This is a great little emergency cooldown when you need that extra stack of an Adder's Gal to apply additional heals. And it's also great to use as a pre-planned ability because as a healer, we want to pre-plan our abilities, not just use them off reaction. We want to proactively use abilities, but this can be used reactively. So just keep that in mind. We then have Holos. This is on a 120 second cooldown and it's going to create an AOE that restores HP of yourself and all nearby party members by 300 cure potency and it's going to have an additional effect which reduces all damage taken by yourself and nearby party members by 10 percent and it's going to last 20 seconds this is incredibly good this is good for raid wides and good for just your tank individually so keep this in mind this is a super good ability as well we then have a pine hammer this is pretty much like hammer but instead of just being on one target, it is on the entire party. But instead of 300 potency per shield, it is 200 potency per shield. So slightly weaker, but justified because it's AoE. This is on the same cooldown as Hymer, but it does not share a cooldown. So don't worry about that. Just like Hymer, when the barrier expires, it's going to give a heal. And it's going to give a heal of 100 potency per remaining stack of my Hamination. So slightly different to Hammer. If you have any stacks left over, it's going to culminate those stacks into a heal. So if you have four stacks left over for some reason, then it's just going to make that a big heal at the end. This is great for raid wide damage, and it's also great to just use on the tank in particular if you need to. Pretty much only in dungeons will we do this, but we might end up doing this in raids as well. If there's no AoE damage going out in the next 120 seconds, which I highly doubt, but it is what it is and it is there if you need to use it just on the tank, although I do recommend just doing this in dungeons. We then have Crassus. Crassus is on a 60 second cooldown and this can be applied to a single target, ourselves or any other party member. This is going to increase all the healing they receive by 20%. This is excellent to use on a tank or someone in dire need of healing. This also works with your Cardia heals, so keep that in mind if you want to keep healing. If your tank is in need of healing but you don't want to heal them with a GCD heal or whatever, then you can use Crassus on them and this is going to increase the healing they receive by 20% from your Cardia healing by a further 20%. You can also combine this with Soteria if you really want to go for overkill and really heal the tank up with a lot of potency if you want. I'd probably rotate them, but you can do this if you want to, if you really want a big initial heal. And finally, we have our last ability, Numa. Numa is on the GCD, so it can be used with Zoe, which I highly recommend. And it deals 330% potency 
in damage to all enemies in a line in front of you and 50% for any remaining enemies so it has that drop off. This is damage positive on two or more targets and damage neutral on single target. Of course there is more to it than that. When we use this ability it's going to restore our own HP and HP of all nearby party members within a radius of 20 arms for 600 potency. So just a thing to note this is not affected by the line AoE the line AoE is purely for the damage, the healing effect is all around you, so don't worry about having to line up with your teammates when you do this. And this is also further affected by the Cardia effect, so this is a big heal on the tanks and a big heal on the party in general. Now how I use this ability is, well it's, it's an incredibly flexible ability actually. You can use this on raid wides when your party is falling below a certain HP threshold, if they're getting low then you can use this as a big top up and it's also going to upkeep your damage. And you can also use this in say a dungeon when your tank is doing a big trash ball, then you can use this to get a damage increase from AoE Inc and to heal your tank up quite a bit as well. So really good to use in AoE situations in dungeons and also raid wides on in raid instances. I love how this ability works because you, you're not pressured into using it off cooldown because it's damage neutral with everything out. So you only need to use this when you need to use it or on AoE. But even then, if it's in a raid instance, maybe save this for an actual raid wide mechanic because it's just a really ideal and really good heal. Okay, and let's finish off quickly with first and foremost, our Resurrect. So this is our Resurrect, Igiro. Works exactly like every other Resurrect in the game. So just keep this in mind. We then have our roll actions, Repose. This is gonna sleep targets. It has its uses, but not much. We then have a Sooner, this is going to remove a single detrimental effect from our selected target. So say if someone is affected by Paralyze, Sleep or whatever, then we can use a Sooner and it will cleanse them. We then have Swift Cast, this is on a 60 second cooldown and it allows our next spell which we use when we use Swift Cast to be immediately cast with no spell timer. This is great to combine with our Resurrect when someone dies and we need to resurrect them quickly. It's almost essential to have Swift Cast up for this. And it's also really good to use as a mobility skill. So say if we need to move and we don't have any Toxicons or Phlegmas, then we'll use the Swift Cast and Dosis. We then have Lucid Dreaming. This is on a 60 second cooldown and it's gonna restore our MP gradually. If Sage didn't have enough options to restore MP, then it has this as well. I usually use this around seven to 8K MP left and that'll just top me back up and keep me at a healthy level of my MP. We then have Shore Cast. This is on a 120 second cooldown and it allows any spell that we cast during the effect to not be interrupted. So when raid wide damage goes out, uh, usually not in the case of raids, but sometimes in a dungeon, if a mob hits us, and we didn't really want to hit us. It might interrupt the spell, so this is handy for that. And it's also going to nullify most knockback and drawing effects. So this is really handy for when a boss is going to do a knockback mechanic, then we can use Shorecast to not be knocked back and upkeep our damage, which is just super handy. It lasts six seconds, so be wary of your timing with this. Then we have Rescue, a pretty niche ability. It's on 120 second cooldown, and this will basically instantly draw a target party member to us. So this can be used to pull a party member to our side. Say if you see a party member in danger, they're mindlessly standing in an AoE and it's about to go off, then you can use rescue on them and it's gonna save them and pull them out of the AoE. And that is every single ability Sage has, all the mechanics and gauges involved and the role actions. So let's move on to the opener and rotation part of the video. Next we have the opener and rotation. All we do here is pop a intelligence pot just before the pull. Then we start casting Dosis into Eurekisa Dosis. Use two Dosises here. And then after which we're going to pop our Phlegmas to be in line with raid buffs. That's pretty much it, but just be wary sometimes raid buffs are late in say when you're doing a trial instance. So try and maybe cast another Dosis just before the Phlegmas, just to keep an eye on when the raid buffs are coming out. Obviously don't hold on to them for too long, but just keep a close eye on those raid buffs and when they're going out. That pretty much covers the open up rotation part of this video just make sure you're keeping your doses dot up at all times and pretty much holding on to phlegmas for raid buffs and not over capping them at two next let's go into a dungeon example the first thing i'm going to do before my tank does a wall to wall pull is use a zoe and then use a eurekison diagnosis on them this is going to give them an incredibly strong shield as they're pulling as they're pulling i'm just gonna like run alongside of them and try and get my 
Decrasia on as many of the targets as I can. As soon as I finish pulling, I'm first going to cast my Feasts 2 just to buff all of my next up abilities, then going to cast a Carachol and a Panheimer, but you can make this Panheimer or Heimer, it doesn't matter the order. And then what I'm going to do is just going to spam my AoE spells and I'm not going to have to heal the tank at all here. And also if you didn't notice, when my Carachol ran out, I also I then went on to pop a Torachol on my tank instead. You'll see that I cast another Eureka Barrier on my tank, another Eureka Diagnosis on my tank just before the enemies come. I then go to the enemies and I spam my AoE again, running alongside my tank as best as I can, spamming my AoEs along the way. And as soon as my tank's finished pulling, I'm then going to repeat what I did last pull, do a Theseus 2, do a Carachol, do my Numa because this is a DPS increase. You can do this on the first pull or the second pull, doesn't really matter. I would probably use it on the first pull, but it is what it is here. I would then use a Hymer on the tank. I completely forget because of how like unnecessary it is, but... I would suggest when you're leveling as well, especially, to use that high mark because it's going to help you a lot. As this is like, as we're overgeared a little bit for this content, I completely forgot to do it. I should have done it, but I didn't. But regardless, I didn't really need it. But I do suggest doing that. So, using Panheimer or Heimer on the first pull, and then Heimer or Panheimer on the second pull. Just rotating those two between each pull, as there'll always be two pulls before the boss. I'm going to keep this part of the video very short and simple. I'm just going to go over how you should be raiding as a healer. Just a quick lecture, really. So when it comes to raids and healing, really everything you do, you want to do in such a particular way. You want to plan your cooldowns and you don't want to be too reactive. You want to be more proactive. Of course, being reactive comes into play when someone takes damage. So do be wary that it is part of your job to also be reactive. But really when that comes to the main subject of raiding as a healer, just remember, plan your cooldowns. Take into account what I said about dungeons. You can very much do a similar thing when it comes to raids. You can rotate your Kerachols, your Torachols, keeping these up at all times as much as you can. So you can have it on your tank as well at all times, but also be wary of when raid wide damage comes out because it's very important to then have Carachol up for that and maybe an Exachol and just heal the party up and have a barrier and a regen on your party when that raid damage comes out and also using Numa on big raid wide damage. A side note as well is if you want more Toxicons to really maximize your damage is when a boss becomes untargetable and it's gonna come back and do an AOE, then my suggestion is to use your Cressia Diagnosis on two or three targets who are a bit squishy and this is gonna proc their shields, destroy their shields and give you three stacks of Toxicon straight away. The boss comes back down you're going to have three stacks of Toxicon held in reserve for when you need to move. This is really handy to have when you're really optimizing your damage and you want to not lose damage when you have to move. So that's a little tip from me to you. Just when you're doing raid instances, uh, when the boss becomes untargeted one, it's not a damage loss to apply those shielded diagnosis. Also a quick note about stabilization, stabilizing yourself or stabilizing a party member who just died or you just died. What you want to do is you want to probably Tarachol them to give them a big heal and mitigation to last them a bit. So that's going to ease them into a stabilization state so you can easily top them off without having to worry too much about incoming raid wide damage because they have that 10% reduction in damage received. We can then throw them some Durachols to further stabilize them and maybe use a Rismato to get another stack and then throw in another Durachol just to really stabilize them and get them up back to health. This also applies to yourself, so say if you die as a Sage and you get back up, when you're dead, your Adder's Gowl gauge will continue to increase, so you don't have to worry too much about that. And when you get resurrected, either when there's raid-wide damage coming out, staying still to keep that invulnerability, and then obviously once that's gone out and everything, then what we can do is do exactly what we do to someone else who died, and just get ourselves back up to health with, with Tarachol and Durachols. And then making sure we're also stabilizing our MP again, because as a Sage, we can really get our MP back up to max with not really too many issues. Make sure we're using Lucid Dreaming if it's off CD and using some other Adder's Gale stacks to get that MP back. Okay, let's move on to the gearing and statting of a Sage. So gearing and statting on healers is a very interesting thing. It's very personal preference and how you feel. I am going to give you my rundown of how I would gear a Sage and this honestly might not be the way you will find yourself gearing a Sage. This, as I said, is very personal preference. For me, personally, because I feel Sage is very much not wanting to ever really cast a GCD heal, I would honestly prioritize critical hit rate here, 
because this is going to maximize our damage output it's also going to just increase our healing capabilities when we use critical healing this affects our ogcd heals as well so for me personally when i gear sage i'm going to be gearing i'm going to be melding and going for as much crit as possible after critical hit rate i'm probably either going to be melding determination or direct hit now direct hit isn't really as strong as it used to be back in shadowbringers determination is on a pretty even planing field with direct hit maybe being slightly stronger the thing i don't like about direct hit as a healer is it doesn't affect our heals in any way so for me personally i'm probably going to go determination as i deem the extra damage you get from direct hit to be so marginal that i would rather have determination which is still going to increase my damage and it's also going to increase my healing after that you can honestly go for either piety spell speed or direct hit i'm personally going to then go for either spell speed or direct hit probably leaning more on spell speed again because this is actively going to impact my healing capabilities and my damage capabilities because spell speed is going to make me get casts out sooner and it's also going to increase the potency of my healing over time effects so again this is like a double benefit stat i want the extra healing but i also want the extra damage so i'm gonna go spell speed hit. then we have our last two stats piety and direct hit you know my reasoning for direct hit i'm not going to meld this because i just don't like the stat as a healer and i barely like it as a tank either and then you've also got piety i don't really want piety as a sage we have so many ways to get mp back that this is such a moot stat for me so when it comes to these two stats of course we're gonna have some piety in our gear this is unavoidable but we're not going to have any direct hit in our gear, so we don't need to melt this. Which then is going to leave the priority system, in my opinion, from crit being our biggest priority, then determination, then spell speed. The last two is completely up to you. And honestly, this is all up to you, because as I've said, this is personal preference. Take it from someone who's been playing the game for a hefty amount of time. This is how I understand healing. This is my healing playstyle. I very much care about my damage output and my healing output at the same time. So this is what I'll be going for personally. And if you want to follow this, you can follow it. Okay, guys, that's going to conclude my Sage Guide. I hope you've enjoyed it and it has provided to be very informational to you and very easy to digest. This might be a bit of a longer one. I'm not actually sure. We'll see when it comes to the editing process. I do apologize and I also do apologize for how long these videos are. A lot of you still watch them though and I really do appreciate that. I feel like these guides that I make, I want to cover so much in one video that they have to be long, they have to be this duration. I could obviously make them shorter but not cover as much and I feel like I just don't want to do that because it's going to it's going to skimp out on so much information that I just don't want to miss. Jobs are complex things and they do require in-depth videos and discussions to really to really tap into their potential. Anyway, a few closing notes about Sage. I absolutely adore this healer class. It's probably going to be my main healer when it comes to playing a healer in content. I have absolutely fell in love with it. I love its aesthetic. I love the healing. It, and as I said, probably at the start of the video, it feels like I'm playing a tank that is giving people my tanking cooldowns rather than putting them on myself. So as a tank, I relate to Sage so much. It's incredible. And if you're a tank player and you've never tried healing before, and maybe you're watching this video out of curiosity's sake, then I highly suggest Sage. It feels at home as a tank player. It honestly feels at home. I feel like tanks are going to enjoy this class the most out of anyone. So if you're a main tank, give Sage a go. I think you'll really enjoy it. It feels a little bit too powerful, but I'm not sure because Savage has come out and I've seen really good top tier healers play Scholar over Sage. And there are reasons for that, like the sprint Scholar has, and, and there's other reasons too. So I'm not sure if it's overtuned, but it does feel incredibly powerful and strong to play. I'm not healer main, so I'm not going to go into that discussion too much. But as I've said, I have really enjoyed this job and tapping into its potential. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps me a bunch. If I missed anything or you've played Sage and you want to let me know how you're finding it, then please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to read and reply to you guys. If you like this content, you enjoy guides for almost all combat related instances and, and jobs, then please do hit me with a subscribe as I am going to be covering every single job and every single combat instance in the game and even more as we further our horizons into the future. So. I will leave it there guys. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, stay safe, we out, peace.